Building unlimited forms doesn't have to cost you an arm and a leg. There's a lifetime deal that's called Bitform that will allow you to create unlimited forms and you can do it right now on your WordPress site. It's super easy to use and I'm going to show you how on this video. Hey, what's up everyone? So this is Bitform and I currently have it installed on my demo site and it's super easy to use. I can build traditional forms, set forms, conversational forms, and I can add these to my website. I can embed them and I can share it wherever I want. So having this deal is fantastic. Now, let me go ahead and show you the deal that's going on right now before I show you how to actually build your forms, okay? So currently, Bitform is on a lifetime deal and it starts off at $79. Now, there's a trick and maybe they don't want to tell you, but basically you can get off with the $79 deal and use as many forms as you want. Now, they have a bunch of available features, as I mentioned before, the type of forms, conditional logic and repeaters and a bunch of things that you can start using. So currently there's two plans available. One is limited to five websites and plan two is, lim is unlimited websites, which is a fantastic deal for that lifetime deal. But if you use plan one, you can actually install this on a website and you can get off by building your forms there and using it in different sites by the embed option. Now you might want to do that. You might not want to, but you got that option. So there's two available options right here. And the thing about this is that the beauty is that there's no limitations. You install this on your website and you can build the amount of forms that you want. And that's what I love about this. The only limitation is the amount of websites. But if you want to get rid of that, go for plan two. So definitely a good deal. So let's jump over to my WordPress site. So this is one of the ways that you can start building forms. You can get started with a blank form or using a template. There's booking templates, business operations, educational feedbacks, etc. And they're adding more as of this video. So in this case, I'll use one of this ones, the operating business operation, and I'll use this one, job application multi-step form. Now, the idea is to show you the advanced features of Bitform because basically you got uh, the basics, but then you got other things that are more advanced that you can fully take advantage of Bitform right here. So in this case, I put in a template that's a step form. So we can see here that there's step one, step two, three, and four, and I'm able to add another step if that is something that I want. In this case, it's totally fine this way that it's built. So I'm good to go with that. Now, the first thing you need to know that on the left, there's two options. You got your fields and you got your style. So in fields, you're going to find all the available fields that you can drag and drop inside of this form builder. So in this case, if I want to drag a section where there's text, because maybe I want the user or client to have a space to write something, then I'll add a text and I can go ahead and update all these fields by clicking on the edit button. That will give me all the available fields here that I can start editing and doing things that I need. I can add a question here. So what is your favorite color? And this is just for testing purposes. And let's update it really quickly. I can change the placeholder information there with all the available details right here for the settings. And trust me, there's a bunch of settings because you can highly customize each one of these fields. You can independently change the look and style of each one of these elements. Plus, there's a ton of features like field key names, labels, you can add, also add a subtitle if that's something that you want to add there. It depends on what element you're going to add there. If you want to use subtitles, admin labels, the size and position, you can even make these shorter if you want by just dragging it right here. And it's just super simple and easy to do that there. Okay. So you got helper text, default values, suggestions, autocomplete, input, etc. You can even make this required. You can hide this one in case you want to use conditional logic, which I'll show you in a bit but there's a bunch of options available for each one of the elements that you drag and drop here. Now, these are the current fields available as of this video, and there's several of these. File uploads, advanced fields, countries, currencies, etc. There's even the signature one, which I'm gonna show you. They have recapture uh, repeater. I'll show you that in a bit. So if you wanna add a signature, just go ahead and drag it inside of here. And again, each one of these elements will have the available settings in the right once you select it. I got the settings. I got the style here. So if I click on style, things changes. I'm now able to edit the style, which I'll do in a bit. Okay, let's jump into fields back again. So that's how easy it is to add a signature. And I would recommend that the signature you make it required. So jump all the way down here and make it required so they can't skip into the next step unless they sign it. Okay. Now, another feature that I want to show you is the repeater, which is a great option here. So if I bring in the option for repeater, I could add this and it'll allow the user to add more spaces in order for them to fill out something. So for example, in the repeater, 
if I change the label name to, so in this case, I'm going to ask for favorite colors and I'm going to add a text section. Okay. So this is going to be dragged inside of the repeater, right? So let's go ahead and update this. Let's go ahead and preview this. And in the repeater, I am asking for favorite colors. In this case, I would hide the text from here and I'll be able to add my favorite colors. So I'll just say uh, blue and then have an option to add another field here. And I would say red and I can go ahead and add as many as I want because this is a repeater, which is a good option. For example, if you are making a cake form, for example, you want to add the option for them to select the different flavors or type in different flavors then that is a good option to use repeater. So it depends how you want to use repeater and you can add more elements here and they will repeat when they click the plus button. So a great option to use right here. There's also an option to add file attachments. So if you want to add a PDF, that is possible too. So let me go ahead and type in file here and you got an option that says file upload and there's the advanced file upload and it gives you different options. I'm going to use the advanced file. I'm going to drag it inside of here. So uh, right around here, just for testing purposes. Okay. So I'm going to click on the settings button and on the right, again, we got the different settings for the type of element that we've selected. In this case, what options you have available here are down here. So for example, we have the option to do a file size validation. So if I enable this, I can set a minimum file size to one megabyte, for example, and it's up to you if you want to enable this or not. There's also file type validations. So we can decide what type of files will be allowed for this. There's also image preview, video PDF previews. So if you upload a PDF, you can view a preview here. The image crop options, image resize, image transform. And there's a bunch of options available here for this particular element, which is pretty awesome that you get these options available here. So that's great, all right? And there's also payment options. So in this case, they got PayPal, they got Stripe. Now I would recommend that you add the details for these payment gateways in the settings before you actually add them but I'll show you that in a bit. Okay. Now, once you're good to go, let's just say that the form is ready, even though we were just playing around, we are good to go to jump into the settings. So let me go ahead and update this. Let's go to settings. And I'm going to show you one of the most important parts for me when it comes to a form builder, which is conditional logic for that. Let me go ahead and hide one of the elements because I'm going to show you how easy it is to use this. I am going to use a drop down. Okay. So let me go ahead and drag it inside of here. And this will be an option for the urgency of something. Okay. So is it urgent? And I'm going to make it really simple. Here we go. And then we have the options. And in this case, I'm just going to say uh, yes, no, and I'll keep it simple. Yes. And no. all right. So here we go. So maybe you have something you want to use conditional logic with. In this case, if it's urgent, I'm going to allow them to upload a file, right? So in this case, I'm going to hide this field right here. So I'm going to make it hidden. And now it has a little eye crossed off. That means that this is going to be hidden. So let's go ahead and update this. Let's go ahead and preview this. And you will see that there is no upload option because there's no conditional logic enabled. And that's what we're going to do. So let's go jump into settings, conditional logic. And in conditional logic, I'm going to add a new condition. So this one right here. Let's go ahead and edit this condition and I'm going to remove this because I'm going to make it a bit simple. So if that means that if something happens, it's going to do something, then it's going to do something, right? So in this case, if the form field for is it urgent is equal to yes, in this case, what's going to happen? Well, then the advanced file upload will be shown, right? So it's going to show and I'm going to set another condition here at else if, and let's just say that if the is it urgent equals to no, then it's going to keep it hidden. So let's go ahead and use the advanced file format here and it's going to hide. All right. So we're good to go. Let's go ahead and update this and let's go ahead and test it out. So let's go ahead and preview this. You can see here there's no upload option. But let's just say that they have an urgency. So I'll say yes. And now we have the file upload available. If not, then it's going to hide it. So here we go. It's now hidden. In this case, I use one of the elements just for testing purposes, but you get the idea of how this works. Now there's a bunch of things that you can do with this option. So for example, in this case, I use equal. And that means that if it's equal, yes, then it did something. But I have the option if something changes, so if it changes to whatever I set in the value, then it's going to do something. If it's null, that means that it's going to do something. If it contains, 
if it doesn't contain, if it starts with, if it ends with, and we can do a whole lot with these actions. So conditional logic can be simple and it can be really powerful and complex depending on how you want to use it. So definitely a great option. Now, once we are here, you got your form settings. For example, you can allow a single entry for each IP address. And that means that it's a good option if you don't want them to repeat the form fill out with the same IP, which could be a good idea, especially if you want to avoid a spammer. So definitely enable that. You can make this require user to log in to submit the form. So we are in WordPress and if they are not logged into the account, so maybe you have a subscription website, then they can't fill this out. So good option, depending on how you want to use this. You can validate the input on focus loss, disable entries. You can enable recapture V3, honeypot trap, disable form limit entries. You got block IP list. You got allow IP and you can add these IP rights here. You got your confirmation options here. So right now there's a successful or error message here and you can customize this if you like, or you can do a redirect. So send them over to a link once they submit this. Maybe you have a cell site and when they fill this out, you want to send them to a particular sales page. That is possible with this option. You got your email templates, so you can create them right here for the email that's going to be sent out. The integrations, they have several integrations available here. One of my favorite ones, and I think that no form should be without, is the webhook. Webhook practically gives you access to practically everything. So if you want to send this information out to another system, that is possible too via webhook or the other available integrations here, depending on how you want to use it. They got Pavli and 8N, Zapier, and all these available integrations. But for me, Webhook would do the job just fine, right? You have the form abandonment option here. So if, if I enable this, I got options. Data view and edit, available options here. Conversational form, this is actually my favorite style of form because it looks really modern. I'll enable this and you'll see the preview really quickly. And here we go. We now have that same form, but in a conversational manner. So here we go. You can see how that works. I got the, my theme settings, conversational step form settings, my navigation settings, and everything is editable right here. And there's also a short code. That means that if I want to add this form with this style, I use this short code anywhere I want in my WordPress site. So it's super easy to use. Now I can also use this in the embed option. Now that will be over here in landing form. So you have all these available options to use your form. You have to enable this in the form in order for this to work. I go ahead and update this and I can add a custom URL and I'll just say test, test, and I got my new link right here. So if I copy this, go ahead and update it, go to that section. I now have the form right here. This is on my WordPress site and it's a conversational style with that link that I just generated with this option. I can set a page title. I can share it via direct URL, just like you saw right now and I can embed this via HTML code. So if I want to use this in a different section of the website or a different website, that is possible through this option. So this would be a fantastic option if you create a website, a WordPress website dedicated to creating your forms and embedding them, that is a good option, all right? So several options available there and the sliding options here on the right. There's PDF templates if you want to set that up and all the available options are available right here double opt-in option and the WP off option here. So if you want to go really advanced, that is a good option too. And once you build your form, you have the available option to view your entries. So in this case, I have two entries right here. I can go ahead and view the responses. And right now we were on the builder section and in the settings section in the middle, you'll see the entries for this particular form. In this case, I'm able to view all the available data for this particular form that was filled out. So it's just, Super easy and practical to view the entries right here. And the beauty about this is that you can export the data via CSV, Excel, etc., all from here. So I can export the form data right here with all these available export formats with this option. So you don't have to stick with the data inside of here. You can actually export it and you can view the analytics reports for this particular form. So each independent form will have its own analytics. So a ton of options available form your form building needs. And I definitely recommend that you check out Bitform, especially since you are avoiding the limits that you would have in a traditional form builder where you pay for a subscription. Now, I would highly recommend that you go through the form settings right here because there's a bunch of options available. You'll be able to view your app settings for setting up your CAPTCHA, your payment settings, your integrations, Google Ads, SMTP if you want to send out emails 
with your own custom domain, PDF, CPT, API. There's even API for this for really advanced features. You've got a bunch of options available with Bitforms. So highly recommend it if you want to build forms without having those limitations. So advanced features are available to you right now for that low price of $79 for five websites or $158 for the unlimited websites, which would be the way to go if you want to avoid limits. And if you want to sell this to clients and start making a lot of money or avoiding that month to month payment somewhere else and getting this for a lifetime deal. So definitely recommend it. Grab Bitforms right now. There's a 60 day money back guarantee. So in case you don't like it, you can go ahead and refund it. So that is Bitform and that's a wrap.